Hello! I originally sat down this morning to make a patron slash members only video, and then I decided that this message needs to go out more generally. I'm not going to do this very much anymore on this channel. Obviously, I'm trying to make the switch to scripted content, but I felt that this message was important enough to go ahead and record this video talking about what we're going to do next with regards to how this election went. I don't think there's a lot of point in going over what could have been, what we did wrong, what could have happened, uh, you know, playing the blame game on, on this whole situation. So my perspective is like in an attempt to manage our anxiety going forward, for me, it helps a lot more to make a concrete plan about what you can control rather than, I think that we're, we're in, in looking at the retrospective, what did Kamala do wrong? What did the Democrats do wrong? You know, why did this go down the way that it did? I think that that's an attempt to wrest a sense of control because like, oh, well, we could have done things differently. We can do things differently next time. I'm personally of the mind that we need to just focus on what to do next. So what, one of the things that we need to do next is be gentle with ourselves. Excuse me. We need to be willing to take a couple days. Obviously, it's already been a couple days since the election, but my personal opinion is if you do need to take a couple of days to mourn, to get yourself a little treat, to break your diet, to take a break uh, and, you know, take some naps, I think that's all good, you know? However, let's be careful not to get stuck there. Let's be careful not to allow our despair to consume us. Let's not fall into a depressive spiral, all right? We're going to start taking some actions. I'm going to tell you what I think I might do and what you could also do and like what we can do collectively to help us moving forward. So on the personal level, I am going to prioritize my health because I'm not going to be effective if I don't prioritize my health. I'm going to ignore news that makes me feel ineffective, or at least, you know, I'm not going to dwell on news that makes me feel ineffective. I'm going to wear a mask everywhere I go, especially in community organizing events, and I highly recommend that you do too, because that is a way of indicating a priority of your health, a priority of your community health. Like, we can't do community organizing unless we prioritize not catching COVID and flu and RSV multiple times a year. I know that a lot of people don't want to hear that. It's going to be a point where maybe people stop listening to the video, but listen, you can't do this community organizing thing while allowing like deadly viruses to spread through the community and while boxing out vulnerable individuals, trans people and queer people are more likely to be disabled than the general population. And they're more likely to have long-term complications from COVID. So in order to be accommodating, like in order to have everyone at the table, you know, it doesn't hurt healthy people or people at less risk to wear masks, to wear respirators. N95, N95 Aura is what I recommend. You can also get a flow mask. You can get something that's even more protective, but you can't do community organizing without prioritizing COVID protections. So prioritize your health. I'm gonna get back into exercising as soon as I can. I did recently catch COVID and I'm trying not to end up with long-term complications. So I'm still in that six week window where I need to take it easy, but I'm going to work on building my strength. I want to look strong so that I can avoid potential altercations by looking like somebody who can handle themselves. And that it, like being strong means you can do things in the community. You know, you can help someone move, carrying boxes and stuff. You know, your, your strength is an asset to yourself and your community. I'm also going to do cardio when it's possible because you never know when you might need to run. Okay? De-escalation, always an important tactic to know. So being able to remove yourself from a situation if somebody tries to personally accost you, that's very important. Okay? So if you're capable of exercise, I would say you should do that. I'm also going to be looking when I move into potentially a martial arts program so that I can personally protect myself. Basically, there's a couple classes that I'm thinking about taking. I want to take Stop the Bleed. You can do most of the Stop the Bleed training online. 
and then do the last part of the training. If you want to get certified and you, you practice on the dummy and everything, you can do that part in person. CPR, first aid. You should, if you can, acquire some of those paddles, the zap paddles, because again, with COVID, um, it's, we're, have, we're seeing increased cardiovascular events among the age group of people that's like 25 to 44 and healthy, um, like heart attacks, heart failure, strokes. So CPR, like compressions on the chest, keep a person like in a state where when paramedics show up, they could be resuscitated, but the CPR, it's like once 10 minutes has gone, that person is probably not going to be resuscitated. So paddles, so that you can actually restart someone's heart and learning how to use those paddles, also very important. So these are some ways in which we can, you know, make sure we are materially prepared for anything that could happen. I would also recommend that you find a way to arm yourself. Now, guns are obviously expensive, and some people have, you know, mental health issues where they don't trust that they're going to be able to own a gun safely, but it is still an option on the table to consider. If you can safely own a gun, if you can't afford one, I would recommend that you get one and learn how to use it, train with it, uh, get a concealed carry license. If you're in a place where you require a license to conceal carry, you can also carry pepper spray. I carry pepper spray on my keys at all times. Everywhere I go, I have pepper spray with me. So those are some kind of like personal protection things that you can do. Now I want to talk about some of the community things that you can do. So get involved in your local community, make relationships in your local community. That doesn't have to be centered on politics. If you want to join a cross stitch group, I'm planning on joining, like if I can find a hiking group of some kind when I move, you can start with the basic, like, okay, we have hobbies that are in common. However, you can also join the like local DSA groups, the Democratic Socialists of America. That is a, you know, they're politically organized. I know that Progressive Victory has some groups around the country that you can get involved in. So we want to get to know people. We want to get, like, we want to establish mutually supportive relationships. We need to, sh we need to show up for other people so that we, so that people will show up for us. You know, you can't just expect things from people. You want to establish a situation where, like, your neighbors care if the government raids your house and tries to kidnap you. You know, you want to st establish those kind of relationships. Now, getting involved politically, oh, I would also say uh, try to find a community garden plot um, because we're going to have increased food shortages and supply chain disruptions. So if you can produce any of your own food, a community garden plot, or potentially uh, you should do some research into vertical gardening and, and try to do that inside your home because you can. Uh, so those are some things like try to see if you can produce food and learn skills like canning and all that kind of stuff. I have a couple of really great books. Um, the, uh, the Encyclopedia of Country Living and The Self-Sufficient Life and How to Live It. Those are two pretty comprehensive books uh, that you could try to pick up a copy of. Uh, and then as far as like political organization, there are some things that I think we should be trying to do. So if you live in a swing state or a red state, we should be trying to push, like try to get it on the books of like a referendum that the people can vote on to change the electoral college system. I don't think we're gonna be able to abolish it reasonably. <clears throat> like if we have an election next time, what we would like to see is like what we have in Nebraska, where instead of winner take all, where whoever gets the majority of votes gets all of the electoral votes, what they have in Nebraska is districts. So I think two of their Democratic, or sorry, two of their electoral votes are committed to the Democratic Party of the five, and then three are going to the Republicans, because instead of winner take all, it's like, okay, if 49% of people in Pennsylvania voted for Kamala, then she should get proportionally 49% of the electoral votes. And that would kneecap the Electoral College's ability to put Republicans in power. Again, we don't know what's going to happen with the whole, is there going to be an election next time? That's why I recommend we do a lot of things outside the framework of the Electoral College and, and outside the framework of thinking of the presidential elections. Because you can also get involved locally, like you can volunteer 
for socialist candidates running for mayor or running for treasurer or whatever. You could yourself run for local things like school board and treasurer. It's not like a high bar. There's other things besides mayor and governor and, and president. There's other ways that you can get involved. You can volunteer for campaigns, phone banking, text banking, knocking on doors. That is a way that you can get involved locally. You can get local referendums put in like, you know, if you want to increase uh, taxes funding to the library, that's something that you could campaign for locally. If there is a law right now that says that you can't distribute food to homeless people, then try to get that law repealed. But also, volunteer at the homeless shelter. You know, that's a great way to get involved. Homeless people are members of our communities and they need to be treated as such. That we have like, I think, record levels of homeless people right now in this country. So yeah, uh, anything we can do to help those people, like investing in programs that will help them, but also like just treating them like they're people and making sure that they have what they need, donating to the homeless shelter, you know, if you have some clothes you need to get rid of, instead of giving it to the Goodwill, call the homeless shelter and see if they need supplies. And, you know, maybe they need soap. And if you have a little bit of spare money, maybe you can donate some soap. Or just donate money so that they can buy whatever supplies they need. So we need to be focused on things that are within our control. Things that are attainable. Local stuff is so much more attainable. Stuff on the city level, the municipal, the county level, those things are all much more reachable. And like, I, I may have already said this, but don't forget that lots of elections happen in like May, local elections. Sometimes you, lo you uh, locally vote on things in May or in August and on the midterm off years, right? Let's not forget about all those local things that we need to be aware of, be involved. Find out who is running on the school board and and also double check things. It's not, uh, lots of people are registering as Democrats and then switching parties or registering as Democrats in order to undermine the progressive values that the Democratic Party allegedly stands for. So, you know, maybe take the extra 15 minutes to double check, <laughs> like, what does this person actually believe? Do they claim to be a Democrat, but they are actually against abortion rights or whatever? Like, let's make um, informed decisions on that level. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. I probably missed something. Like I undoubtedly, there's some facet that I've missed. Um, oh, mutual aid. If you're not in a vulnerable position, donate to people who need it. Like I'm running a GoFundMe. I'm not even one of the most neediest people, but people like me who are in red states, who are fleeing to blue states, who need help donate to our GoFundMes or offer your couch. If someone's driving across the country, say, hey, you know, if you're going to stop off in Albuquerque, then why don't you stay on my couch instead of having to get a hotel room or instead of sleeping in your car for the night? And maybe you need, maybe uh, somebody's relocating to your city. Maybe you live in Portland and someone's relocating to Portland. If you have a bed that they can sleep on for like a couple weeks while they get a job and find their own apartment, because it's really difficult. I can tell you from personal experience right now that, you know, my partner is like a skilled tradesman and no one will hire him until we are physically in the location that we're moving to. So I have to find an apartment that is going to be, you know, willing to accept like, hey, can we give you two months rent up front while my husband finds a job? Like my, I have income, but my income, <laughs> they're like, we want paychecks. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, my income doesn't, I just don't have paychecks, so it doesn't count. Anyway, um, so yeah, maybe somebody needs a place to sleep while they find a place to live. That's what mutual aid means. We, it means showing up for each other. It means giving each other the benefit of the doubt. It means being supportive, being an ear, being a shoulder to cry on, helping someone move, helping someone pack. These are all things that we, it's fully within our power. It's fully within our power. Above all else, let this be your guiding light in everything you do. Love yourself and love your neighbor. 
Let's set aside some of our petty differences. Let's stop having discourse about bi lesbians. Let's try to focus on what we have in common, particularly among other leftists. You know, I'm not saying that you need to go out there and have like compassion for like violent Trump voters who literally want you dead or whatever, you know, but maybe have a little bit of compassion for your repeat COVID brain damage grandma, you know, maybe their minds can be changed. We can't necessarily just abandon people. And especially we can't abandon fellow leftists who are trans and queer and disabled. So, and, and people of color as well. Like we need to give each other the benefit of the doubt. We need to be kind, care for other people, care for yourself, care for other people. This is the guiding principle. This is what we have to do. We have to start existing outside of the structure of voting every four years because we might not be able to vote next time. We don't know what the next four years are going to bring. I don't think that we should be doomer about what the next four years are going to bring because let me be emphatic about this. You've lost nothing this week. You've lost nothing. Biden is still in control. No laws have passed on the federal level to strip you of anything this week. So let's keep our chins up. Let's keep hopeful. And I said this, this is the thing that made me cry this week more than anything else. Let's not have the kind of, it's not a flowery hope. It's a gritty hope. It's the hope that gets up off the floor and spits out a tooth and lifts its chin defiantly. That's who we need to be right now for ourselves and for each other. We can't give up. We can't give in. For all the young people who are yet to be born, like for all the people who have passed on under this enormous pressure, we have to keep going. We have to keep moving. So... Give yourself that time, again, if you need it, but let's not wallow. Let's not let despair consume us. Let's make sure that we are taking care of ourselves and taking care of the people around us. Be guided by a principle that no one is going to save us. Institutionalism is not going to save us. We have to take action. No one is going to swoop in and, and fix everything for us. Like, we all have to participate, and it's one step at a time. It's one step forward, it's one step forward, it's another step forward. It's one small action of care. It's one gesture. Everything is one step at a time. So, please remain hopeful. Live out of spite if you have to, but live with this principle of loving each other and and. Like, it's weird, it's a weird juxtaposition, but we have to be soft for each other, and we have to be hard for our enemies. And that's how I'm going to operate going forward. I don't want to be completely hardened, but I will be hardened for my enemies. And I will be compassionate and soft for people who I care about. And the group of people that you care about should be willing to be expanded to folks you don't know who are in proximity to you. So I think that's just about all I have today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm not going to be posting stuff like this very much anymore. I, I mean, potentially ever anymore, but I feel it's, I have a responsibility to use my platform. And from this point forward, again, I'm mostly going to be doing like video essays. I want to do things that are fun so that we don't end up bogged down all the time with all this shit. So Today, I'm working on a script for my Dragon Review series that you all seem to want me to do. Um, so, yeah, thanks for sticking around, I guess, for that wild ride. And, uh, again, if you want to support me, you can go fund me or Patreon or memberships. You get a little bit of a benefit from being a member or a patron and all that jazz. So, anyway plugs. Yay. It's part of the job. Anyway, thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Um, if y'all want to share any 
stuff in the description, or sorry, in the comments of like, I'm going to try to approve links. Sometimes links don't, they get caught up by the automatic filter. But if you're like, hey, uh, this is a great first aid starter course online. And then you can finish the stuff that you know in person or whatever. Uh, all those things are, are appreciated. If you have any additional ideas for stuff that people could be doing to get involved and to care for themselves, um, you know, please share that. And, uh, you know, be kind to each other. Give, give each other grace, give each other love, and Jesus, I'll see you soon. <laughs> I stream on Sundays and Wednesdays, so love y'all. Later.